Okay, so with that, we will go ahead and get started. Um, just a few reminders for our team's training. Please make sure that you are muted at all times. Um, we will try to keep an eye on, you know, making sure we mute people if, if they're not muted, but um, just to distract, you know, keep away from any distractions that would be helpful. If you are on a computer, the mute button should be uh, located along the top upper right toolbar. Um, the presentation today is only going to take about a half an hour, um, so we'll have plenty of time to actually answer questions at the end. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please just use the chat feature, and then I'm going to go back afterwards and answer them after the presentation. Um, the chat feature should also be in that same toolbar, so you can just click on that and type in your question and it should show up in the chat so that we can see it later on. If for some reason you can't figure out how to use the chat feature or if you're just calling in on a phone, um, that's fine. I will provide my email address at the end of the presentation um, so that you can always just email me with any questions that you might have. And if at any point you lose connection, just go ahead and exit and then rejoin the meeting. That usually fixes the problem. OK, so moving on, uh, I do want to introduce myself. My name is Sabrina Haight, and I am a water program specialist in the operations section of the Bureau of Safe Drinking Water in um, DEP's central office. And I have been with Drinking Water for 14 years next month and have held various positions within Drinking Water over that time. So the reason that I'm the one presenting this presentation is um, because I am the lead and copper rule revisions rule lead for the state of Pennsylvania. So um, we are slowly working on, we're kind of in limbo right now, waiting to see what EPA comes out with for LCRI, but uh, we are, working on getting LCRR implemented in the state of Pennsylvania. OK, so over the course of this presentation, we will be answering the following questions. Why are risk mitigation measures required? What are risk mitigation measures? Who needs to follow risk mitigation measures? And then we're also going to talk about various resources available to water systems to help um, implement these requirements. So first let's talk about the why. Why are we requiring risk mitigation measures? EPA has stated that lead service line replacements are associated with short-term elevated drinking water lead levels for some period of time after replacement. So the purpose of risk mitigation measures is to address concerns associated with these elevated levels of lead. Because of these concerns of elevated lead levels, EPA did add risk mitigation measures into the LCRR, the lead and copper rule revisions. And although LCRR doesn't go into effect until October 16th, 2024, we at Pennsylvania DEP do have existing regulations under chapter 109.44, which specify that public water suppliers shall take whatever investigative or corrective action is necessary to assure that safe and potable water is continuously supplied to the users. So in the interim, we are using that regulation to enforce this requirement until we have um, our own LCRR or until the federal LCRR goes into effect. So now let's discuss what the risk mitigation measures are. There are three risk mitigation measures, each of which I'm going to discuss in more detail over the next few slides, but to summarize, the first one is to provide notice to the owner and residents of the effective ser affected service lines. The second is to provide consumers with a pitcher filter or point of use device and six months of replacement cartridges. And the third is to offer to collect follow-up samples. Now, all of these are outlined in detail in a fact sheet that we put together, which is available on eLibrary already. Um, it's titled Risk Mitigation Measures for Water Systems Conducting Lead Service Line Replacement. And we have the form number down there at the bottom of the screen. Um, I will also go over that fact sheet a little bit later on in the presentation again. So the first risk mitigation measure is that the water system must provide notice to the owner of the affected service line 
or the owner's authorized agent, as well as any non-owner residents served by the affected service line before the service line is returned to service. And then there are specific requirements that the notice must meet. So it must include mandatory health effects language that have been established by EPA, and those are listed in EPA's regulations, 40 CFR 141.85A1. The notice must also explain that consumers may experience a temporary increase of lead levels in their drinking water due to the replacement of their service line. It must include information about removing and cleaning faucet aerators, flushing service lines, and reinstalling clean faucet aerators before the affected service line is returned to service. And it must include a statement in Spanish and any other appropriate language, depending on the ethnic makeup of your community, uh, regarding the importance of the notice. Now, to assist water systems in providing all of the necessary information that I just went over, uh, we have developed a form that they can use. So the form is also on eLibrary. It's titled Lead Service Line Replacement Customer Notification. There's the form number, um, and this template can be used, again, to make sure they're providing all of the required information. The second risk mitigation measure is that water systems must provide the consumer with the following before the affected service line is returned to service. A pitcher filter or point of use device that is NSF ANSI 53 certified to reduce lead in drinking water six months of replacement cartridges, and instructions for use of the filter and replacement cartridges. Now, if the affected service line serves more than one residence, such as a multi-unit building, like an apartment building, or a non-residential unit, such as an office building, um, the water system shall provide the items listed to every residence in the building. Okay, and then the third risk mitigation measure is that the water system must offer to collect one set of follow-up first draw and fifth liter tap samples that must be taken between three and six months after the completion of the full lead service line replacement. Um, and these should be analyzed for lead. Now, if either of the follow-up samples exceed 15 micrograms per liter of lead, which is the action level, then the water system must provide the results of both samples to residents as soon as possible, but no later than three calendar days after becoming aware of the result. If neither of the follow-up samples exceeds 15 micrograms per liter of lead, the water system shall provide the results to the samples um, to residents within 30 days after receiving the results. Now, in addition to providing the results, um, the, following must, the following information has to accompany those results. An explanation of the health effects of lead, a list of steps consumers can take to reduce exposure to lead in drinking water, contact information for the water system, and the maximum contaminant level goal, which is the MCLG, and the action level for lead and the definitions for those two terms. Um, EPA has defined those in 40 CFR 141.153C. And then the follow-up sample results and accompanying information must be delivered to the consumers either electronically, by mail, by phone, hand delivery, or another method approved by the department. We have also developed a form to help water systems do this, um, and we will go over that form a little bit later on in the presentation. All right, so moving on to the final question that I posed in the very beginning, um, who needs to follow these risk mitigation measures that I just reviewed? I've mentioned several times that these are definitely for water systems conducting lead service line replacements. Um, however, they also apply to water systems replacing galvanized requiring replacement service lines or that removes a lead pigtail, gooseneck, or connector from a service line. Now, in addition to the water systems that I mentioned in the previous slide, which are required to follow the risk mitigation measures, we also have additional systems that we're strongly encouraging to follow some of the risk mitigation measures. And these systems include any water system that is going to take 
an action that causes a disturbance to either a lead service line or a galvanized requiring replacement service line. So disturbance can mean a lot of different things. In this context, disturbance is any activity that can dislodge lead particles into the line, such as vibrating or bumping the line. Uh, some examples of these disturbances might be an internal pipe CCTV inspection, hydrovacking, or again, any other activities that might cause a vibration, um, turning a valve on a service line, things like that. And for these situations, when the investigation reveals that the service line is in fact a lead or galvanized requiring replacement service line, as opposed to non-lead, if it's non-lead, then it's not really a big deal. Um, then the LCRR specifies that the system must complete the first two risk mitigation measures, which is providing that public notice um, and then also providing a picture filter or point of use device that's NSF ANSI 53 certified, along with instructions and six months of filter replacements. Okay, so I'm now going to spend the next several slides going over various resources that are available to assist water systems in complying with these requirements. There are two DEP resources I'm going to mention, and then there's also two AWWA resources. So um, I've already briefly mentioned a couple of the DEP resources, so let's look at those in more detail. The first one is that fact sheet that I mentioned, the risk mitigation measures for water systems conducting lead service line replacement. Um, this fact sheet goes over everything I just covered in the first half of this presentation. Um, it's a two-page fact sheet, front and back, and it is available on eLibrary. Probably the easiest way of getting to it is just going to eLibrary and typing in this fact sheet number into the search bar, um, and then it should take you right to it. The second resource, which is also available already on eLibrary, is the Lead Service Line Replacement Notification Form, which I discussed when we were talking about the first risk mitigation measure. This is what it looks like. It's a really simple one-page form that includes all the necessary information a water system needs to include when providing that notice. And there's only a couple places that they need to fill in information about their water system name and also contact information. And again, this can be found on eLibrary by searching for the document number that I have here on the screen. Um, and unfortunately, uh, this form won't be able to be used for the systems that were recommending complete the risk mitigation measures because the first couple paragraphs do talk about actual line replacement. But there's a Word version of this available as well, so they can very easily just kind of copy everything from what should I do why should I do it um, into another form and then, you know, just type in uh, what disturbance activity that they did to cause this notification. All right, now moving on to the AWWA resources. Uh, the first one is AWWA standard C810, which is titled Replacement and Flushing of Lead Service Lines. This document covers a lot of information on replacements, but I did just want to point out specifically those sections that are related to risk mitigation measures. So sections 4.3 um, is titled Communications and Instructions to Customers, so that can kind of help out with that first risk mitigation measure I mentioned. 4.4 uh, is titled Flushing Service Lines After Full or Partial Replacement, and Section 5.2 is titled Water Testing Following Replacement. All of those sections relate to risk mitigation measures and everything I discussed. Um, now, this standard does predate the LCRR, so they don't completely overlap, but they also don't contradict each other. And there's additional information in the AWWA standard about these procedures that is not covered in the regulation. So definitely a helpful resource to look into. 
And then finally, AWWA just released um, or recently published a free guide titled Lead Communications Guide and Toolkit. It is available at the link I have up here for free. It doesn't just cover communication in relation to lead service line replacements. It's kind of more all encompassing and contains valuable information regarding communicating about lead in general and a lot of community outreach information, which will be helpful with everything related to lead service line replacement, service line inventory work. Um, so it's a helpful guide. It's a 35 page document. Um, and worth downloading and looking into. Okay, now there are a couple um, additional DEP resources that I have up here future uh, because they're not quite yet published to eLibrary, but they will be very shortly. Um, hopefully by the end of this month, they will be available on there. So the first one is a risk mitigation measures certification form. And the intent of this form is for water systems to use it to certify that risk mitigation measures have been completed as required. Uh, this form would be submitted to DEP once a year, as long as the system is doing any kind of line or connector replacements in their system. And then the second form is a lead service line replacement sample results notification form. Um, if you recall, when I talked about how those sample results need to get out to consumers, there's a whole bunch of information that went along with that. So this form has all of that necessary information. Um, again, it's just there to help water systems ensure that everything that's required to be submitted along with the sample results actually does get submitted to the customer. Now, I do want to mention that none of the forms, the DEP forms that I brought up today that are available or going to be available are required. Um, they're literally all just there as a guide um, and assistance to water systems. So if water systems want to use their own form of notification, as long as it encompasses all of the required information, that's perfectly okay. Uh, these are just there to kind of help out um, if you would like to use them. Okay, so with that, um, this is my contact information. I will go ahead and take a look in the chat.